Styling a .NET MALI application can be pretty frustrating sometimes. So for instance, I was building a .NET MALI application and specifically I wanted to style buttons in my application. And there were essentially three different variants of buttons that I needed support for. So a primary button, a secondary button, and a primary outlined button. So to accomplish this in my global styles, I created a base button style that really just set the padding. And then I created more styles derived from my button base for each of the different button variants that I needed. So these variant styles set things like the background, the text color, the borders, etc. And then of course, everywhere else in my app to apply these variants, I would simply apply the style. So initially this worked well, but one drawback was that each of the buttons in my application was tied very closely to the structure of my styles. So we were just straight up referencing these styles by their key name. And that's not necessarily bad, but it could be cumbersome if I wanted to refactor my styles, maybe refactor to something like style classes, then I would have to update everywhere in my application to reference those style classes instead of the style. I was also worried that we could end up with a lot of styles here or a lot of style classes if we wanted more button variants. So for instance, we might want a button tertiary and then a button secondary outline, a button tertiary outline and so on. So basically where I was with styles, I didn't feel like I had enough flexibility for what all of these button variants were starting to grow into. So as always, I talk about these a lot, but it seemed like this is something that a component could solve. So I created a new class in my project that's gonna represent all of the buttons in my application. So we'll call this the app button. Can't just call it button because then of course it's gonna conflict with the actual .NET MAUI button class. And we're just going to extend button. So for now, we're gonna have the same exact behavior as a button. We're just gonna sprinkle a little bit more on top so that we have support for all of the styles and variations that we need. And since we have a component now, we can leverage bindable properties to represent all of the different style variations that we're gonna support. So for example, let's just scaffold out a bindable property. We could have a Boolean property for whether or not this button is gonna be styled as an outline variant. So let's add this property, again, a Boolean on our app button by default it can be false so before we give this property any meaning or make it do something let's see how this will be used in our application from a client's perspective so for example we would import or define the namespace that contains our app button and then we can reference it so here we're currently referencing a style to make this button an outline button but now we're going to leverage our app button which means if we want to make this an outline button we can just set outline to true so we're setting this bindable property on our component to true, which means we don't have to reference any styles here. Instead, we're gonna let the component do all the hard work and figure out what styles to apply, which means everywhere else in our application wouldn't have to change whenever we refactor our styles. So this is kind of like a proxy or an interface instead of manually defining the style. Okay, so back to our component, let's give this outline property some meaning and make it actually outline our button. So now we could create a specific resource dictionary for our app button, but for now, let's just put it in our global resource dictionary. So inside here, essentially, we're gonna create a global style targeting our app button that's gonna do something with this outline property. So let's add this style. So again, I'm gonna be targeting our app button. We will have to import this namespace. Okay, we already got it up here. So by default, whether or not the outline property is true or false, we are gonna have some big padding here. And now to apply some specific styles whenever the outline property is true, we're gonna leverage a trigger. So let's define some triggers on this style. So we're gonna have a trigger targeting our app button, of course. And we're gonna be checking the outline property. And whenever this is true, so we do want an outline, then we're gonna apply those specific outline styles. So we're gonna have a white background, some black text, a border, of course, because that's the outline with a width of one. So this references the outline bindable property that we previously added. Here we go, we even get IntelliSense on this, nice. So let's test it out and make sure it works. Let's also add one with outline false. Let's just make this our secondary button. We'll add the secondary variant stuff later. But let's run this. Whoops, and it kind of works. So our outline is working. This secondary button kind of has an outline. So let's actually set the border width to zero when the outline is false. Let's see how that looks. And there we go, much better. So at this point, we've essentially encapsulated the outline behavior, but now we need to support all of the different variant behavior. And we also want to structure this in a way 
so that it's easy to add more variants down the road. Because as we recall before, we were starting to get to a point where we were getting a style explosion for all of the different variants and their outlines. So back in our app button, same kind of approach. We're gonna start with a bindable property. So let's define that prop BP. By the way, this snippet, I've linked to download it in the description if you need it. And this is gonna be the variant property. So the variant's gonna be things like primary, secondary, tertiary, and so on. It's gonna target our app button. And right now we have it as a Boolean because we don't really have anything that represents all of our different variants. So we'll create an enum for that. So we're gonna call this variant type. And inside here, pretty simple. We're gonna have primary and secondary for now. So now we can reference this instead of this being a Boolean for the variant, it'll be a variant type. So again, before we define behavior for this, let's see how this is used. This is actually pretty nice. I never realized this with enums, but you do get IntelliSense on them. So we can see primary, secondary, hooray. We also don't need the set outline to false since it's the default. And let's add our primary button as well, which will be a primary variant. So now we're not referencing our styles at all. We're going fully through our app button. Okay, but we got to make the variant do something. So one thing we could do is on our variant property, we could define a property changed callback. And basically whenever the variant property changes or is initially set, then we could just literally update the styles on our button. So we could set like the background to be whatever color matches the variant that we have and so on. So we'd essentially be setting the styles through code instead of setting them through XAML, which is what we're doing for these other styles. And that could work, maybe that's okay, but I tried it a little bit and I'm not too sure I love the idea of having styles spread between XAML and C Sharp. I feel like it was kind of hard to track when I had tried that. Also setting the background here might not be ideal because for the outline variant, we always want the background to be white. So in order to set the background here in our code, we'd have to make sure we only do it whenever the outline property is false. So furthermore, with doing the styles in C-sharp and XAML, some of our triggers or conditionals would be spread across XAML and C-sharp. Again, not ideal, so we're not gonna take this approach. Instead, we're gonna drive everything through our XAML style. So for example, I would wanna set this background property to the correct value depending on our variant. And then for the outline use case, I also wanna set the border color to whatever color we want for our variant. So don't get me wrong, you could do this by creating a bunch of triggers, or I guess they'd be multi-triggers that say like, oh, if the outline's true and the variant is primary, then we apply blah, blah, blah setters. But then you get into the same situation as we had before, where if you wanna add more variants, you're gonna need basically two more sets of multi-triggers, one for outline and one for non-outline. So we need something a little bit more dynamic here. And this is where we get to leverage the benefits of using a component because now we can leverage C-sharp, which is a real programming language, unlike XAML. Is that controversial? I don't think so. To figure out what the right color should be here, depending on what our variant is. So the way this is gonna look is we're gonna have a couple more, what seem like bindable properties, but aren't actually gonna be bindable properties. And you'll see why in a second. So the first one's gonna be the variant background color. So it'll be a type of color on our app button. We can give it a default of null. And actually this will be the only property that we create for now. So this variant background color is gonna contain the right color depending on our variant. So we can leverage this property in our style. So we can have a binding pointing to the variant background color. And we do need to specify that we're binding to ourself. So let's set the source to relative source self. And just to confirm that worked, we can check and we get IntelliSense. There's our property, cool. And same exact thing for outline cases, we basically wanna move the background color to the border color. So now, as you can see with this approach, we don't need to create a bunch of triggers or anything crazy to get these variants. And in fact, if we wanna add a new variant, we just need to make sure that the variant background color is updated for whatever new variant that we're creating and really nothing in the style would have to change. So on that note, let's hop back over to this property and make sure it's updated depending on what the variant is. So that being said, we are gonna have to come in here and define a property changed callback. We'll call this something like on variant property changed. Let's generate that. And this method is static, but this bindable that gets passed in basically represents our app button instance. So we can just do some pattern matching here. So if the bindable is an app button, then we're gonna take that button and call some kind of method on it 
that's going to update this variant background color depending on our variant. So let's generate that. Here we go. And as you can imagine, just going to be a simple switch statement based on our variant. So whenever we have our primary variant, then here we go. We're going to set the variant background color to our primary color. And then same thing for secondary. Whenever we have that variant, we'll set the background color to our secondary color. And then by default, we can just set nothing. Well, actually, maybe we should set the variant background color to null. So just reset it, which means uh, this will have to be optional. Let's fix that real quick. Should be anyways. And there we go. And one more thing to note is that we're only updating the variant colors when it changes. So that means we also have to update the variant colors when we initialize our component as well. So that we get the initial variant colors. Let's call update variant colors from the constructor. All right, so let's walk through this. Let's put a breakpoint here and run this. Whoops, just crashed on startup. So we have to change this default value on our variant property, which is a variant enum type. We can just change it to null. Okay, so here we go. We're initializing our app button. So this is for our primary variant, which means we're gonna set the variant background color to this color here. There we go. Which means, I believe in this case, we are not outlined. Can we check it? Yes, outline is false. So we're just gonna set these styles here. All right, and there we go. We have our buttons. All right, and I actually want this primary button to have white text. So we can add another property for that. So along with the variant background color, we can add the variant foreground color. So let's just update that everywhere here. And we can just make sure that we set this based on our variant. So for primary, we're gonna set the color to white. So essentially white text. And then for secondary, we'll keep it as black. So all zeros here. And for the default, let's set it to null. There we go. Now we just gotta reference it in our style. So we're gonna set the foreground, we're not foreground text color, to the variant foreground color. And one last thing, I actually completely forgot about this, but I was talking about how these aren't really gonna be bindable properties, they're gonna be something else. And what we wanna change here is we wanna make sure that these bindable properties can't be set from outside of our component. So basically, from all the way up here, we don't want some kind of client to be able to set the variant background color when using this component. We really only want that variant background color and foreground color to be derived from whatever the variant is. So to do that, we can make this a read-only bindable property, which means it can't be set from outside of the component. So this will be a bindable property key instead. And to get the value of it, we just need to take that key and get the bindable property represented by it. All right, and same exact thing for the foreground color, read-only bindable property, and there we go. Okay, so this ensures that, again, it's all driven by our variant, can't be set to something else for some weird reason. All right, let's test this out. And hooray, looks good. We got our variants, we got the right foreground text this time. Looks good. So now, as we recall previously, we didn't have a secondary outline style yet, but now if we want a secondary outline style, we can just set the outline property to be true. And there we go, we have a secondary outline property. So super easy to add. We can even add another variant. So let's see, we just gotta update our enum. So we're gonna have tertiary, and then we can make sure that's added to our variant color switch. So let's add that real quick. Tertiary, foreground color can stay black, and background color maybe something like gray. So we'll do all Cs. And now super easy to use, so we can add these. So one will be not outlined. So it'll be tertiary. Let's define our variant on both of these. There we go. Let's see how it looks. And just like that, looks good. We got new variants with just a few lines of code. Didn't have to define a bunch of styles. So adding new variants, a lot easier. And if we ever need to refactor all of these styles for whatever reason, none of these components need to change. The usage of our component stays exactly the same all the client has to do is pass in the right properties to the component. So just to summarize, we created this new app button component that extends buttons, and we added a couple bindable properties that encapsulate and allow us to configure what the desired style should be for the button. And we do this by leveraging all of these bindable properties in a default style for our component. And we can easily add new variants for our button because we can leverage C Sharp, a real programming language, instead of blowing this up with a bunch of styles for all of the different variants that we want. So yeah, we can delete all of this, 
and be happy. And again, this is just a tool in the toolbox, in my opinion, something that works pretty well for some scenarios. I'm not saying you need to do this for every single component. There's still a place where styles are totally fine. But next time you need to style something that requires a lot of customization, consider if a component would be a better approach for styling.